Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. I am back, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Instead of a book review or showcase, I am going to do a sort of free-form discussion, um, just sort of rambling to the, uh, the microphone here, and I'm going to talk about why you should learn a dead language. You know, um, a lot of people wonder, you know, why should I learn a language like Latin or Greek when there are all these other languages that I could learn that might be a lot more useful to me in my day-to-day -day life. And this is sort of my, um, my uh, justification for why I have done it and me sort of evangelizing uh, why you should, should study these languages um, because I think there is a lot of value to be had in this process. And so I have sort of three reasons that I kind of came up with as to why um, somebody might want to study one of these languages. And the first is probably the most obvious, and that is in order to read texts in their original language. A lot of literature is written in, in dead languages, be it Greek or Latin, which, by the way, that is going to be the primary focus of this particular discussion is Greek and Latin. I know there's a lot more dead languages than that, um, but that's just sort of where I come from and what I'm most comfortable with, so that's what I'm going to be talking about, but a lot of these principles are applicable to any number of, of dead languages. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, back to the point, there's a, a lot of literature written in these languages, and you lose a lot of nuance when you experience them through the lens of a translator, because a translator necessarily has to make certain calls especially in cases of ambiguity um, in order to, you know, give you a product in English that you can read. And you can lose a lot of really interesting things when you, when you do this um, because there's, there are things that are just hard to translate. There's, you know, sort of grammatical nuance that authors definitely play with. There's sort of instances of idiom and whatnot that is hard to render in English, and you, so you kind of lose out on a lot of this stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, both Greek and Latin have really long histories. Um, you know, a lot of people learn Greek so they can read the New Testament, so they can, you know, experience the Bible in its, um, well, one of its <laughs> uh, original languages. Um, there's obviously, on the Latin side of things, there's a lot of Roman literature, but there's also a lot of literature from later periods, a lot of scientific treatises, philosophical treatises, that sort of thing, that are all written in Latin. Um, and so having an, a working knowledge of that language can help you decipher these things and really root your arguments in the actual language that's presented as opposed to something that's been translated for you. Um, so that's one reason why um, you might want to learn a language such as Greek or Latin is that you can really engage it with texts in a way that you couldn't otherwise just through translation. Um, another reason is just sort of for the intellectual experience of doing so. There are a lot of people out there who, who learn languages um, just to learn them because it's a fun and interesting thing to do, especially languages that not a lot of people speak. And considering that, you know, these, these languages are dead, you know, there's not really a living speakers, um, it can be a fun intellectual exercise. Uh, so people do it for that reason. It, it's fun and you learn a lot. Um, and sort of branching, sort of segueing into, into from there is sort of my, my final and probably my personally, uh, my personal most favorite uh, reason for this. And that is, as an English speaker, learning a language such as Greek or Latin actually makes you a better English speaker. Um, your vocabulary and your sort of grammatical tool case um, sort of become greatly increased through the process of learning these languages. And it, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, and the reason for this is, you know, especially this is especially true for English is because English is sort of an odd language in that despite it being Germanic, um, about you know, nearly two thirds of its vocabulary come from Latin and Greek. So by having an understanding of these sort of these roots and whatnot, you can really have a, a, a great understanding of English and greatly expand your vocabulary. Um, so for example, you know, if you're, uh, if you're reading something and you see a word like alterity, 
you might have never seen that before in your life. But if you know that alter, you know, alter means, you know, another, like alter ego, another I, other, right? Um, you might get the idea that, oh, alterity must mean something like otherness. And in fact, that's exactly what it means. So you can see a word and you can know exactly what it means just through your knowledge of Latin and Greek sort of roots and whatnot. It's, it's fascinating. It's like a superpower, you know, you can just know it without even having had, you know, without having seen it before. It's, it's fascinating. Um, but aside from just, you know, expanding your vocabulary, you also sort of learn a lot of really interesting grammatical concepts through the study of these languages, stuff that isn't really taught in English classes. Um, you learn, you know, about like verb conjugation, you learn about different cases, that sort of thing. And a lot of these rules can be applied into English, maybe not rules, but concepts can be applied to English and really kind of help you understand um, English grammar a lot better. You just, you get names for things and you learn concepts that you might not have heard of before. You know, a lot of English um, education isn't really super grammar focused, so you, you it's kind of good to sort of flesh out your, your little toolbox. Um, so for example, like if you are, if you've ever been confused about when to use who versus whom, I know I have, um, once you, you know, study a language like Latin or Greek that is, that has different, uh, you know, sort of noun cases and whatnot, um, those ambiguities become a lot more, um, clear. You kind of understand like, okay, this is how this works. You know, uh, whom is an object case, you know, it's an, a sort of an accusative, right? Um, whereas if you don't have that grounding, it, it can be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more difficult. Um, so you, you learn a lot of really interesting concepts that, that can help you be a, a better English speaker. And I've actually had this discussion with, with people who are, you know, English is not their first language. You know, it's a, it's a you know, second or third language. And, you know, they've said, you know, why, you know, I, I'm a little nervous, you know, learning something like Latin because, you know, I've already put all this effort into English and, you know, I'm a little bit, you know, worried that maybe I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough to do it. And it's, I always say like, no, 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 like you, you can do it. And in fact, by doing so, you will be in a better English speaker. Like you will, you'll speak English uh, better than probably a lot of native people. Um, so that, that's always something I like to, I like to tell people. Um, and it, it is totally true. Like you will have a much better understanding of the language uh, since it leans so heavily on, on Latin and Greek. And from my experience and from people I've, I've talked to about this, they, they seem to agree that, you know, learning these languages has actually helped them um, in their in their sort of English journey as well. And that's, that's sort of a really interesting reason that I don't think a lot of people talk about uh, for why you should learn a language like Latin or Greek. Um, and those are pretty much, that's pretty much all I, I had to say. Um, those are sort of my three reasons. There are other reasons as well, I'm sure. And if you can think of others than these three, I would, you know, throw those in the, in the comments. I'm sure it'll be, uh, you know, stimulate some discussion. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share those thoughts, um, on my little soapbox here. Um, and hopefully you thought these, uh, these ideas were sort of, uh, stimulating or interesting and, you know, um, and tell me what you all think about this particular, this sort of rambly format. I, maybe I should structure these a little bit more in the future. This is just sort of a, an off the cuff experiment kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. But, uh, regardless, I, I appreciate you all for watching this, especially if you've made it this far. Um, and I will hopefully, uh, be back, uh, soon with some more stuff. I have some more books that I'm currently reading that I want to, I, I definitely want to discuss. So um, I will hopefully uh, see you all in the future. Hope you all take care. Have a good one. And uh, I will uh, see you later.